everyone. Happy Saturday. It's a nice hot day here where I am in the foothills of California. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, hopefully everyone had here in the United States had a happy and safe 4th of July and we're headed into already mid-July and uh, summer's flying by but hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, hi Eileen. Welcome. And uh, we're going to be talking today a little bit about um, you know, for me, it was for travel. I wanted something that I could take with me with all my needles and I, I could just grab it and go. And so we're going to make a needle case today. Uh, but I got a little carried away and I did a lot of embellishment and added a whole lot to it this morning and so, well, I didn't do it this morning, but I added a whole bunch of things to it and uh, got a little carried away. And that's what I want to show you today, uh, something that you can take with you when you're running. So we, it looks like people are popping in, Pat and Robin and Mary Lou and Linda, Katie, welcome all of you. Um, hi, Bonnie. And we're, we're going to take a look at this and... I'm going to explain to you and give you some parameters to make your own needle case. I think, a, a, you know, once I started using one and carrying it with me and I would throw it in my suitcase or I'd throw it in my bag, um, generally speaking, I put it in my suitcase because I wanted a little bit more scissors than I could carry on a plane if I was going by plane. Um, I get car sick, so I can't really work in the car. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I could because I could get um, a ton of things um, done if I if I could sit and do handwork in a car. So maybe some of you are like that. So let's take it. Let me drop down and share with you what I have in mind for today. This is the one that I made a couple of years ago for uh, a trip we were taking and I was working on English paper piecing. And so I just decided on a size. I will give you the dimensions of this. So um, on the inside, I put a little pocket and I keep extra, you know, needles or that is where I kept all of my papers for my English paper piecing and put those in. And then I did a second page, which gives me actually four in the book. And um, again, I'll give you the dimensions for this. So I started playing on each page. And this one was kind of a, it started off as a little bit of a, a collage. And honestly, these were the scraps that I had been cutting and that were laying on my sewing table. And I just arranged them on here. Then this one, I wanted to have... Um, those needles that I, I was going to be using most often, um, my straw needles, my milliners, I, I, a couple of uh, pins because every now and then I want to hold things, you know, together and, and whatever. So I put some straight pins in. Uh, my larger ones for uh, my embroidery floss and different, that kind of thing. Um, and then I made a center page. And in the center, I, I just threw in a little heart, added some lace, and ribbon and um, so here were my um, floss needles uh, you know the bigger eye needles and things like that and each page and this one was a leftover piece from uh, a panel that I had and so I stuck that in so as you can see each each one of these pages has something um, a little bit different uh, fabrics a little a little bit different something on it this particular page with this on the back and this I sewed a seam down the center which you can see right there um, so and made it the size that it needed to be so I would have I could throw that in and then I have a little pocket this is a piece of elastic 
so that it was nice and tight and the scissors wouldn't slip and fall. Um, a little needle threader. And then uh, this was for my very large eyed needles. And uh, so I stuck those on the back and I had every intention of writing or using my machine to embroider which type of needle I had for each page onto these little um, wool felt strips. Um, I never got around to it, uh, but I kind of had in my head which page was which, and the center was for the needles that I was using at the present moment. And if they had thread already in them and uh, that kind of that kind of thing. So it was what I was working on at the moment. Then I put my thread in the pocket on the back, stuck some extra needles, another, um, I was given this um, fun little um, needle threader from a friend. And so that stuck back there. This is, I was working on a Laura Heine um, applique project and I had some leftover flowers so I put those there uh, a little dried flower out of a um, bouquet that I was um, actually it was going to be thrown away and I and I just put some little bit of lace and and stuff around it and put that in there some buttons uh, different embellishments beads as you can see um, little flowers again from that arrangement that um, was tired and was ready to, to see better. It had seen better days. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to work at putting this um, needle case together. Let me see if there's anything before I start working on the... All right. And good morning to all of you. Thank you for popping into the chat box and putting in. And again, I, I will look at the questions and if you have any or if you have any comments or additions that would make this project even a little bit more fun, please don't hesitate to, to drop it in the, the chat box and I'll try to look at those at the end of the morning. And so with that being said, um, you know, the front of it was just little scraps and pieces, a, a silk ribbon. I, you know, this was a, um, a very loosely woven piece that, you know, I wanted some fuzzy edges and then a piece of muslin actually over the front of that micron pen. I had intentions of embroidering over the words, but as you can see, I never got to it. So I started today with what I was going to do with you and I had leftover of this, it's tropical fabric, a linen that I had used um, to make my grandson um, on his bassinet uh, replace the old um, cloth that was over it and they wanted it done in a tropical kind of an adventure style type thing so I I had a little bit of that left over so I decided I would I would use that and then I started collecting I just collected things that I thought might go along with this um, fabric and theme if you will and so I, I pulled this fabric out I um, I found this and I thought, okay, it looks, you know, like it would go um, straw, straw hats, a typical kind of thing, some stripes. I don't know that I'll, that I'll use all of this as I, as I work to finish this. Um, so I kind of stuck with the, the blue and the greens in terms of that. And then I thought, well, you know, I've got a little bit of gold and yellow. Um, so I had, you know, I had some of, of this fabric, which is, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's a type of a polyester linen, I think, you know, it has that look of it. And then I have some silk here. Very bright gold, but it might make a fun little center piece. I have this scrap of silk that I, it may find a place in there. I don't know. And then I started grabbing embellishments, um, you know, beads, buttons, uh, different things of that nature. I have this crazy little, um, I don't, 
you know, it came in a bag. Um, once in a while, I find some really fun things um, in a thrift store. And to get two or three items that I want out of the bag, you have to buy the whole bag. And this was one of those crazy little funny, um, I think it's curtain. It, you know, is made for a border on a curtain. But it might make for some fun embellishment. I don't know. And then um, this fun little button of a sun uh, might find its way in there. Who knows? Um, and I get carried away. I get started on something and I can't stop. And that's what happened to the front of this. This was... Um, this is ribbon that was on a roll, again, that I got in a package um, of a variety of, of um, stuff. And so I stitched it down on here um, with, you know, and I didn't want it to show up a, a ton. So I just used a single thread. Um, my uh, masterpiece thread is all it is, single layer. And then I had, um, you know, a fun little button here. So I, I tied it down um, with colors that I thought I might use in, in this. This is another button. Threw some beads on. And then when you fold this in half, I wanted this to be um, the, you know, the binding, you know, across where it folds. So I put that directly down the middle. And I did all of that work so I didn't have to be so neat on the back. And then we're going to sew it to the front of this. So embellishing, um, I have my palette right here. And you can put on the front whatever you wish. And again, most of our machines that we have have so many stitches that we never use. And that could very well be used on something like, like this. And I, I just chose to do it by hand. Uh, I end up kind of doing that. And I need to make better use of these, these fabulous stitches on the, on the sewing machine. And I certainly could have labeled all of my felt, wool felt um, strips that I put the needle in. And I chose wool felt for, you know, putting the needles through because the needles go through nicely. They fit really well. I didn't have to um, worry about the edges um, fraying or any of that. So um, what I can say is just find things, um, sequins, buttons, beads, uh, little pieces and scraps of fabric, um, that type of thing. And uh, you know, these, these literally were out of my scrap bag, um, each piece on this. Uh, and, you know, this was a piece of, you know, of a burlap that I had gotten. And this is a, a silk piece. This is, um, I don't even know what that is. It's, but it's now the center of my little flower and it's help holding that down. It's not a button. It's, I glued it down. And I tend to, to use the glue E6000. When I do, um, I find that it really holds well. There are fabric glues and stuff, but over time, and if I'm bumping things and, and things are, are being carried around, I will find that if it's a little bit heavier like this or a heavier button, that eventually it'll fall off. And I, I don't seem to have that with the E6000, and it works really well with, with that. Um, and again, this was... Um, a piece of binding tape is, is really all it is. I put two little knots at the end and stuck that in. And again, I was going to embroidery over those words. I never got to it. So each of these is a small piece. I think they're three quarter. The these are three quarter by two inches of of wool felt. And the needle just the needles just slip in and out very easily with that. And then if I had room around it, I threw in an embellishment um, because like I said, I couldn't stop. Um, wanted a little bit feminine in the middle, so I had a scrap of that again and a little bit of lace. I ran a, a silk ribbon through it. 
over here I explained that and I attached all these with with thread and all of these things were done before I sewed them together and um, you know the back has has really nothing to it um, so let me share with you for just a moment um, the dimensions that I uh, that I used um, for the outside this piece and for the lining piece I chose eight and a half by six and a half it gave me some room to play and to work with and um, so for the outside and lining that's what I chose but seriously they could be anything you would want them to be uh, for that that dimension so when you get ready to sew these together to turn them right side out you want your pocket page laying down right side up and then you want to pick this page up that you have worked on the right side is is the side that you're going to be working on so that when it folds um, it's what's on the top this is the time if you I did not choose to use a closing for it um, you can use any type of, of closing that you would want to um, a button on the top sewing a elastic flipping it over a ribbon that completely um, goes all the way around this would be the time to add it and you would put those um, on the inside or um, you know put your ribbons on uh, either on your inside pocket page or um, in, insert them on the inside of your needle case so that when you turn it then they will be there and you can have a closure to the front of that I'm just choosing not to do a closure um, with it I for me this is just silly me um, but it gets in my way when I'm sitting there with the needle case um, down and so I just choose not to so inside pocket goes down this flips over um, to the right side I don't necessarily always trim um, my edges uh, the things that are hanging off um, at the beginning I just kind of leave them hang there and I'm going to um, drop some needles right in let me grab some I'm still in the process of this moving thing and I have not yet found everything um, that I need close at hand and I always work in the corners first so that I you know make sure that everything you know is lining up um, properly and the way I want um, the way it needs to actually and when I sewed, let me let me talk a little bit about this when I sewed the pocket on I went 1 8 inch in and sewed um, sewed that down just so it stays in place and it wouldn't move on me and get out of alignment uh, so I sewed it 1 8 inch and that kind of also secures it a little bit more in terms of so I have pinned my four corners um, now I'm going to go back where I have these um, objects um, sticking out for example this kind of straw ribbon and because this linen is very loosely woven and it moves around um, it kind of stretches I you know I want to get everything as in place as I can and make sure that now the one thing that you cannot forget is that you have to leave a space to turn this right side out and so I'm going to start 
go all the way around and stop and and leave a because I've got you know large button I've got a few things here I'm gonna leave a fairly large space for turning my um, case so let's sew this up let me get situated here and I'm and if you know this machine has a beginning lock um, to it so again I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch around but um, take a you know a couple stitches back stitch and then you can proceed and another thing that I really like is that on my foot I can see where my quarter inch is and I won't go over that all right so I'm basically just sewing around the outside leaving that turning opening and so when you're putting embellishments on make sure you don't leave any embellishments um, too close so that when you're sewing around like this you will hit something with your machine and break a needle or drop it into into the shaft of your machine it's very expensive when that happens and that moved a little bit on me there I have to check it out see if I need to re-sew that so I you know a little bit of a I, I went back on this corner because I, I was kind of missing it a little bit and I didn't I didn't want to do that and again I'm gonna just sew up a little bit so I have lots of room to turn and And now this is where I am going to remove this excess because I've now I've sewed it in it's gonna stay put uh, where I needed it to stay put so anything that was hanging over I'm gonna trim all of that off and I need to move over here so I'm just removing And as you can see, this frays quite a bit. Um, probably wouldn't have been a bad idea for me to sew around it twice. Um, I may go back and do that. I don't know. And then I'm going to give my corners a little bit of a, of a trim. before I turn them not too close on this loosely woven material and really any material will work just fine um, you know for this project now let me see if I if I did this right that's always a question with me um, I have been known to have to uh, Resew, unsew and resew because I put things in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna, you know, gently turn this right side out. 
and the first thing that I am going to do definitely is make sure that when I fold this my pockets are to the inside and that is to the outside and it is yay and then I have um, this turning tool um, it is absolutely fabulous uh, we have it in the quilt store shop um, I love it I you know for turning it's got a little bald edge on it and I can get in there and I can get my corners so nicely and I don't you know this is it's got a little bald edge on the top so it's not gonna pierce the fabric and go through it I can work those corners and uh, do a pretty good job of getting them pretty square um, as I'm as I'm working on them and it's just and it's long it fits into things it's fabulous I love it I cannot tell you from with my my sticks and other pointed things how many times I pierced a hole in my fabric and I really don't um, do that with um, with these and so now what I'm going to do that I've got that turned is that I want to um, press uh, I kind of do it with my fingers first and I want to press all the way around that and Make sure it's and this is where this also comes in uh, because where I've got my extra fabric and embellishments I can run this along that seam line and help my turning process um, work there um, which is very helpful to me I think And this particular um, stuff that I put around there is thick right there, so I'm going to take some extra care um, when I top stitch everything around here um, so that that gets top stitched down and it will stay in place. And now at this point, I want to go in and turn each of these under that fourth of an inch and press it and I you know at, at times I will you know take um, pins and you know pin it in place I'm just going to slowly do the the ironing there so that I can top stitch all of that All right, then there is the outside of my needle case. So then um, I will take the time to go back through and top stitch all of this and um, then I can make my inside piece, lay it down. I'll make that little center piece, lay it down. I will then sew um, them all together right in the center. And I'll have a pocket in the front and a pocket in the back. Like um, so. So I just laid them up. And you certainly don't have to use three. Just use two. Just use the one. Uh, you know, it, it's totally up to you what what you want. Like I said, I got carried away, and I did a whole bunch of these. Uh, pay, I you know, I did three pages. It's it's a it's a little bit on the the thick side, but it's certainly not too thick. I have 
everything that I need and more. I have my scissors, my you know needle threaders. I have all the needles I could possibly need. I throw my you know my threads um, here in the back. And I can I can drop my silks or my embroidery floss whatever. Um, here I had extra some extra needles and I put all of my papers for my um, English paper piecing project that I was working on at the time. Right now I'm binding a quilt, so I've got my straw needles there for um, binding and my milliner's needles and folding. And so you get a you get a little bit of a, a backing on that. And so page number one, so I showed you, you make, you know, your other two pages um, basically the same way. And uh, you have your needle case. So let me check and see if there are any questions. And let me go also. So you saw that the outside and lining was eight and a half by six and a half on my particular um, uh, piece. That inside pocket uh, was, oh, excuse me, let me go back. Um, the inside pocket is eight and a half by six, um, folded over. The, uh, the larger page on the inside, let me get, I'm, I'm forgetting to get rid of the larger page is um, six and a half uh, or six and a half by six and then um, sewn around and turned. And then uh, the center page is five by six is what I set that for. So those are your dimensions for what I did and if they that works for you that's great but again you can you seriously can make them any size you wish let me go back and just double check and make sure that there are no other questions well and thank you for coming in East London South Africa um, thank you for being with us today and, and it is a little treasure chest. That's how I see it. Where do you put a ruler? I have a very short ruler and I just stuck it in the pocket. And uh, it's, it's one of those very small uh, yellow rulers. And I don't have one close by that I can snag real quick, but I just stick it in the back pocket. So I, you know, I, I purchased um, one of those little ones for that. Um, well, Joyce, we'll have to find a day and have tea together or a cup of coffee. Yeah, it, it Leslie, it really is fun and it's very easy to do. Uh, it's just a one way to do a, a needle case. There are there are many, many, many different ways to do that. Um, all right. How big is the pocket? Um, I believe I it was eight and a half. Uh, so it's the length of whatever you make your outside. And I just did six inches and folded it over. So it's not quite halfway up. Uh, I didn't want to lose things down in the little pocket. Um, all right, the turning tool. Uh, John stuck a link up there. So if, if I mean, that turning tool is, is just wonderful. Um, it's just a best little uh, turning. It's one of those those things must haves. And uh, my Bernina is the seven seventy. How do I dispose of needles and machine needles? That is something that um, when the box gets open, I will have to show you. But let me just tell you what I, I do for disposing of my needles and uh, the machine needles. I have a um, prescription that I get all the time, and they always give them in those large, you know, a few little pills in the bottom of a very large um, plastic um, 
jar or case for for your prescription. I had my husband take his drill and he drilled a hole that was only big enough to drop my sewing machine needles in and uh, my um, straight pin the top of it and so I didn't want it any bigger because I didn't want them to be able to turn that and they would easily fall out so he drilled a hole in the top and um, because I didn't want the prescription bottle sitting on my um, sewing desk and you know things can be functional um, but I think they need to be pretty too so I um, wrapped fabric around it and used uh, my E6000 glue and, or fabric glue, whatever you went to, and I glued it around, put a little ribbon, a little bit of lace, and I did the same thing around the edge. I put lace around the edge of the top where you have the lid, um, and then I painted the top so the words, you know, um, the Rexall words and all of that weren't on the top. So I have this pretty little... Um, prescription bottle sitting on my desk and when I have you know bent or broken pins or I change my sewing machine needle I drop it into um, the hole that I had um, my husband drill into the top of that and it's quite it's quite fun and it's cute and it's also um, very functional so and uh, it's another way to upcycle and recycle a prescription bottle. And uh, it's fun. It, it's just fun to, to do that kind of stuff. Anyway, I hope that you've been enjoyed uh, learning my little method of making a needle case. And for some of you, I've, I've seen that you're going to try it. So I think that's wonderful. And we will see you next week online. Have a great one, uh, whatever you plan on doing for this week. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming.